thank you for inviting me to speak to you all today. Um, so I'm going to talk about an innovative interdisciplinary approach to ambulatory management of malignant bowel obstruction in gynecology and oncology. Um, I have nothing to disclose. So basically today I'll just focus on a new interdisciplinary ambulatory model of care for patients with or at risk of MBO and really look at what impact nursing can have and also to share this knowledge with other cancer centers in order to improve the quality of life of these patients. So as we all know, women with a gynecological cancer during their disease trajectory um, sometimes will develop a malignant bowel obstruction and women with ovarian cancer are at a 51% higher risk of developing MBO. Their median survival is usually between 45 to 169 days, and if they do have a palliative surgical intervention, they could live between 124 to 408 days. And usually when a patient develops MBO, they're considered palliative, and the focus of their treatment is really symptom relief but the clinical management is really not well defined. And as a result of this, patients and clinicians end up having to use a lot of healthcare resources for support. So we did a retrospective analysis of our patients um, between April 2015 and March 2016, and we found that we had 87 patients that were admitted with MBO. And their median hospital stay was about 15 days, and the longest was 133 days. And the median cost per episode is about $9,700. So, you know, looking at especially the length of stay, we asked our patients how they felt in terms of how we're supporting them with their bowel function, what could we do? And here's what a couple of them had to say. I discovered solutions to my bowel problems only after four hospitalizations for partial bowel obstructions. Would have been helpful to know beforehand that this can be an issue with ovarian cancer and how it can be managed with a low residue diet and the right laxatives. Took me a while to learn to be preventative around this issue. More education at the beginning would have helped. So when you look at the patient's perspective and you look at our stats, our team decided that we really had to make a change. And so the goal was really to develop an interdisciplinary approach to the ambulatory management of MBO in gynecology oncology. And this would require a number of stakeholders to work together, including our patients. Now, nursing actually really had a lead in terms of how we can develop this model of care. So through an, a collaborative academic practice uh, fellowship for a quality improvement project, I was able to standardize and optimize the role of the specialized oncology nurse within the interdisciplinary team. And this was by standardizing the approach to nursing assessment management and educations for patients with or at risk of MBO. But what is it that actually needed to change? If you look at the literature, it really talks about inpatient management. There really isn't anything about outpatient management. So what would happen is our patients would call our tele triage line or they would present in clinic with symptoms of bowel obstruction or already have bowel obstruction. And what would we do? Send them to the emergency department. That's more of a reactive model of care. How can we actually have more of a proactive model of care for these patients? Well, we would need to create potential clinical characteristics that would determine MBO risk develop a tool to direct the management of our patients, standardize our nursing assessment, standardize our bowel management regime, and create and implement educational tool for patients and nurses. So what, what could actually be the clinical characteristics to determine MBO risk? Well, we did a literature review, and we found that the common, these are the common disease factors that we often will see with our patients, including the common signs and symptoms. A tool to direct the management of our patients, so a color coding system. This can actually tell us the status of our patients. So green is somebody who doesn't have a bowel obstruction and they may present with one sign or symptom. Usually these patients are constipated and they're self-managing. Yellow is somebody who doesn't have a bowel obstruction, but they actually have um, greater than two signs and symptoms of MBO and disease factors. Orange is somebody who has a bowel obstruction, but they're managed as an outpatient. 
and red is somebody who has a bowel obstruction managed as an inpatient, and blue is someone who has no further treatment options, and they're supported by our palliative care team. How do we assess our patients when they come to clinic? So majority of our cancer centers, patients have to fill out their ESAS, and in our center, it's the Distress Assessment and Response Tool, or DART for short. But this tool only has three symptoms that really relate to MBO, which is pain, nausea, and appetite. So we developed a standardized MBO assessment tool, which further included constipation, vomiting, and diarrhea. And just as of yesterday, we were able to um, amalgamate it with our DART assessment tool, which our patients uh, use on an iPad. So when patients rate three or more for either one of the symptoms, it triggers the secondary assessment tool, and they answer the questions. And so now we can have a nice graph of their symptoms, and this actually helps us with data collection. So when patients are seen in the clinic, the nurse reviews their DART assessment form, reviews it with the physician who assesses the patient, and determines if the patient should be enrolled in the MBO program. And if they are, then they receive an educational package. And this package includes, thank God, the Bristol stool chart, which works really well because the graphic descriptions that we get are not so great. <laughs> um, it also includes, which is really important, are the dietary um, management for the patients. Um, you'd be surprised at what our patients are eating um, in terms of fiber, because we really don't want them to have a lot of fiber. And if you actually, our nurses have become very skilled in asking them what are they eating. So you'll find that a lot of your patients are eating kale because it's the superfood. Um, a lot of berries and avocados and nuts. Um, and these are things that they should actually not be eating. And most importantly, patients will then actually um, receive proactive phone calls from the nurse. Standardizing our bowel management regime, oh my goodness, there's so many laxatives out there that it's not only confusing to patients but to clinicians as well. So we worked with our palliative care team, we worked with our pharmacist and developed a very basic algorithm for clinicians to use and nurses as well. Um, and this is for patients that are at risk, uh, not for patients with bowel obstruction. So if you have, um, you have your clinical characteristics, a color coding system and an assessment tool and a bowel management regime, you get an algorithm, and I'll just break down the arm of each algorithm. So the green algorithm, so patients call the nursing line or patients present in clinic, and they have symptoms, bowel symptoms. The nurse does the assessment, determines that they're not at risk, really they're just constipated, and they just need some laxatives. But the nurse then tells the patient to call the next day to make sure their symptoms are resolving. But if the nurse under the yellow algorithm then determines that the patient is at risk of bowel obstruction, they, if they're on the phone, they tell them to come to clinic, physician does a diagnostic test, either an x-ray or a CT scan, shows they don't have a bowel obstruction. They then get some information on diet management, a referral to the dietitian, and the nurse now proactively calls the patient to ensure, again, that their bowel symptoms are resolving and not getting worse. But if that CT scan actually shows that they do have a bowel obstruction, well now the physician must decide, can the patient be managed as an outpatient or as an inpatient? If the patient can be managed as an outpatient, they might get hydration at home, adjust their medications, and again the nurse will proactively call the patient until their symptoms are resolving. If the physician decides the patient needs to be admitted, then we see if we have a bed in our cancer center, and if not, then they go to the emergency department. If during admission there are no further treatment options and the patient is supported by palliative care. So how do our nurses proactively manage our patients? So again, red is someone who is admitted. When they're discharged, they're orange. If their bowels remain active for a month, they progress to yellow. Again, if their bowels remain active for a month, they progress to <coughs> green and then they're discharged. Nurses will proactively call the patients under the orange arm for a month, once a week, or as needed based on the nursing assessment, and then they can progress to the next arm. Again, for a month, they call the patient once a week or bi-weekly until they progress to the next arm, and then they're self-managing. So how do we communicate all of this information to our colleagues and to each other? 
uh, we document using SBAR and we've added C for callback. And this is really important so that we can stay on track with our patients and make sure that we know exactly what they're taking and how they're doing. We are working on an e-cancer nursing documentation that will also help with um, when a patient, it's an electronic tool so that when patients end up in eMERGE, it will actually say that they're under the MBO program. And this way it will help with their management when they're in eMERGE. So my first question. Okay, so what are the potential disease factors that determine MBO risk under the MBO program? Okay, so it is A and C. And my second question. The nurse proactively calls Ms. Teal. I can't read that. <laughs> okay, you guys are reading it, so that's fine. <laughs> and the answer is orange. So we did, um, uh, we did a survey for our nurses um, pre the MBO education, and we found that 58% of them were aware of the different types, 83 were aware of the different causes, and 25% on the dietary management. And after providing some education and some in-services, um, their knowledge significantly went up. We, of course, surveyed our patients um, before the MBO program and after the MBO program. Um, and we found um, that their knowledge, and this was surveyed their knowledge in terms of maintaining good, good bowel function in relation to medication, diet, and general knowledge. And so you can see that their confidence level actually did improve. But here's what they had to say. And filling out the forms and looking at the charts was very, very helpful because I have um, sometimes a loose bowel and sometimes constipation. I also feel that um, I knew exactly what to take and when to take it, so I wouldn't go too far one way or the other. Um, also, when you're doing chemo, you're extremely um, anxious, which doesn't help your bowel. The more anxious I would get about it, the worse it got, so it was great to have Naslin to talk to. And um, I actually feel like I have a plan each time I do my chemo. And it seems the last two sessions of chemo, the third is coming up, were excellent. Um, from the bowel perspective. It's also something people don't like to talk about. It's very uncomfortable to talk about. So it was nice to be able to talk about it with somebody. Uh, we worked through programs so that I would no longer have this um, bowel obstruction. So it worked like a charm. Having somebody watching you and making sure your bowels is okay is so important with ovarian cancer because it's so common and it's very, can become very serious. So, you know, I just want to say that um, the whole point of this program is to teach your patients to self-manage their symptoms. And I'll give you an example. So I had a patient who had an active bowel obstruction, and I was, it was on my third week of giving her a phone call. And when I spoke to her, she said that on my, I called her on a Thursday. She said that on Monday she ate something, and she had abdominal pain and vomiting. So she put herself on a clear fluid diet, and on Tuesday, she felt better, and on Wednesday, her bowels moved. So what does that show us? One, she was able to identify her symptoms, self-manage them. She did not go to the emergency department, and she did not even call the nurse. She was able to self-manage her symptoms. That's what we want to do. We want to empower our patients with knowledge and how to manage their symptoms. So how have we done so far between July 2016 and December 2018? 319 patients have been managed under the MBO program. 55% had a diagnosis of MBO. 45% were identified at risk. 71% of our patients progressed to self-management. And our lovely, my lovely colleagues over there, raise your hands, they conducted 1,829 proactive calls. Um, and we've had a decline in the hospital length of stay from 27 to 20 days. Question three. Ms. Teal, who is at home with partial bowel obstruction, reports making smoothies every day, consisting of kale, almonds, raspberries, blueberries, and avocado. The nurse should tell her to...
stop drinking the smoothies. <laughs> I guarantee you, if you ask your patients what they're eating, they will be eating these things. What are the five components identified in the development of the MBO program? Yes, all of the above. So we've accomplished a lot. Um, in 2018, we won the Cancer Quality Council of Ontario Award for Quality Innovation, um, uh, as well as the uh, Nursing Innovation Award and uh, our Cancer Video Awards. We have developed and implemented a number of resources. Um, we have now monthly MBO rounds and we've just invited our GI team to join us as well, as well as communication tools between inpatients and outpatients. Um, we also have just received the University of Toronto Strategic Planning Innovation Fund. And this is in collaboration with Sunnybrook Health Sciences Center. And this is a first step with Dr. Jian and Dr. Helen Mackay um, in collaboration for this program. We worked with our patient education team and developed a number of resources. And I'm really happy to report that we literally just finished our five part uh, video series on bowel obstruction for our patients. And these videos talk about what is bowel obstruction, how does it occur, uh, management with diet and medications. And I'll just show you a really short clip of that. How to manage complete bowel obstruction. Complete bowel obstruction is when the bowel is fully blocked. A complete block means poo and gas cannot pass out of the body at all. If you are taking laxatives, stop taking them. This is serious and requires medical attention. So we're just fa uh, finalizing our standardized operating procedures for MBO. We have a pre-printed MBO order for gynae and GI. We're working on an e-learning tool for our staff. Um, and our future plans are to apply the MBO clinical model to other cancers that experience MBO. We want to validate our MBO risk score and hopefully develop an EMA Health app uh, for our patients. That would actually even help us with our proactive calls and collaboration with other cancer centers to share our knowledge and disseminate the program to improve the quality of life for our patients. Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you for, for staying on time. And this is, uh, let's open it for one burning question if we have one in the audience. Okay, I guess burning is not Hi. so much for Hi, I'm bowel obstruction, right? I'm, I'm burning over here. I just have a comment, actually. I just wanted to congratulate you um, with regards to a palliative approach to managing our patients. I, th I think we can all probably do a better job. And really, anticipation is one of anticipation of the problems that lie ahead, and preparation for that is really a critical link that I think that we could all improve on. So um, congratulations again. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very, very much. It was very enlightening. Thank you.